When it comes to mafias and mobsters, Americans are never behind. From Al Capone to Bugsy Siegel and the dapper Don John Gotti to Frank Lucas, there's an extensive list of mobsters who feared the whole world. But there was a mobster who even feared the most prominent crime families. His name is Roy DeMio, the boss of the DeMio crew and the inventor of the Gemini method. In this video, we're going to talk about the violent life of Roy DeMio, his criminal career, his rise as a mobster, and his mysterious murder. Early Life Born on September 7, 1940 in Flatlands, Brooklyn, to Italian parents, Roy Albert DeMio really spent difficult days as a kid. Belonging to a working-class family, DeMio graduated from James Madison High School in 1959, and that was the time when he started making money as a loan shark. DeMio was the fourth of five children born to Eleanor DeMio, who worked as a housewife, and Anthony DeMio, who worked as a delivery man for a laundry company. During his graduation, he had several classmates, including the renowned economist Walter Block and Bernie Sanders, who would later run for president. And after completing graduation, he began his career as an apprentice butcher at a local grocery shop. Then, on April 23, 1951, Roy DeMio's older brother, Anthony Frank Chubby DeMio, was killed in action during the Korean War. Then, when Roy was 19 years old, his father passed away due to a heart attack, and his mother moved back to Italy with Roy's younger brother. And that's where his criminal career began. Gambino Family In the beginning, Roy DeMio was associated with the Lucchesi crime family faction that controlled tow truck firms, junkyards, and auto theft activities in Brooklyn. Anthony Gaggi, a member of the Gambino crime family and a soldier in the organization, met DeMio in 1966 and informed him that he could earn even more money with his profitable business if he came to work directly for the Gambino organization. DeMio accepted the offer. During the latter half of the 1960s, DeMio's chances in the organized criminal world improved on two fronts. He kept working alongside Gaggi in the loan sharking business and started putting together a gang of young people involved in auto theft. This group of criminals eventually became known as the DeMio crew inside the criminal world and within the circles of law enforcement. By 1972, Rosenberg had already connected his close pals with DeMio, who subsequently hired them as employees. Joseph and Patrick Testa, Anthony Center, Richard and Frederick Denome, Henry Borelli, Joseph Dracula Guglielmo, and eventually Vito Arena and Carlo Profeta were added to the group extra members over time. In the same year, DeMio became a member of a credit union in Brooklyn, and soon after that, he was elected to a position on the board of directors. He could conceal the unlawful proceeds of his business dealings by using the position he held. He also told his co-workers at the credit union about a lucrative side business he was involved in, which was the process of laundering the money of drug traffickers he had been familiar with. DeMio also used money that he stole from credit union reserves to build up his loan sharking operation. Although DeMio's collection of loan shark clients was still mostly comprised of people in the automotive sector, it quickly expanded to include consumers from other industries, including a dental office, an abortion clinic, restaurants, and flea markets. At the end of 1974, a struggle between the DeMio gang and Andre Katz, a young auto repair shop owner who was partners with DeMio in a stolen car ring, had continued to grow. Katz was involved in the stolen automobile ring together with DeMio. On June 13, 1975, Kestel was used to successfully bring Katz to her apartment complex in Manhattan for what he believed was a date. Upon his arrival, members of the DeMio gang promptly kidnapped him and took him to a location where he was held for ransom. Gemini Method As the 1970s continued, DeMio cultivated his followers into a crew experienced with the process of murdering and dismembering victims. Except for killings intended to send a message to any who would hinder their criminal activities, or murders that presented no other alternative, a set method of execution was established by DeMio and crew to ensure that victims would be dispatched quickly and then disappear. The execution style was dubbed the Gemini Method, after the Gemini Lounge, the primary hangout of the DeMio crew and the site where most of the crew's victims were killed. The process of the Gemini method, as revealed by multiple crew members and associates who became government witnesses in the early 1980s, was to lure the victim through the side door of the lounge and into the apartment in the back portion of the building. At this point, 
a crew member would approach with a silenced pistol in one hand and a towel in the other, shooting the victim in the head and then wrapping the towel around the victim's head like a turban to staunch the blood flow. Immediately after, another crew member would stab the victim in the heart to prevent more blood from pumping out of the gunshot wound. By then, the victim would be dead, at which point the body would be stripped of clothing and dragged into the bathroom, where the remaining blood drained out or congealed within the body. This was to eliminate the messiness of the next step, when crew members would place the body onto plastic sheets in the main room and then dismember it, cutting off the arms, legs, and head. After that, the body parts would be deposited in sacks, placed in cardboard boxes, and transported to the Fountain Avenue dump in Brooklyn. And because of the enormous amount of waste dumped at the landfill daily, the remains couldn't be located there. A plan by the authorities to excavate sections of the dump to discover the remains of victims were scrapped in the early stages of a federal and state task force investigation into the Demio crew in the early 1980s because it was deemed both too expensive and unlikely to uncover any significant evidence. Instead, the investigation was focused on the Demio crew, the landfill located across the Belt Parkway from the Star at City apartment complex on Pennsylvania Avenue in the predominantly African-American section of East New York in Brooklyn, was closed in 1985 and has been capped over since then. Some of the victims were murdered in different ways for various causes. Sometimes the remains of people who were thought to be informants or who had disrespected a member of the crew or their superiors were dumped on the streets of New York to send a message and serve as a warning. There were other situations where it was not feasible to entice the intended victim into the Gemini Lounge. Alternative settings had to be utilized in these scenarios. Finally, at one point or another, the deceased's remains were dumped overboard from a cabin cruiser that belonged to Richard Denome. Epilito Murders Late in the year 1979, Demio and Nino Gaggi were embroiled in a dispute with two maid Gambino members who were a part of Gaggi's crew named James Epolito and James Epolito Jr. They were the cousin and paternal uncle, respectively, of a crooked former investigator with the New York City Police Department named Louis Epolito. Louis Epolito's father was also a made member of the Gambino family. At a meeting with Paul Castellano, James Epolito leveled allegations of drug selling against Demio and Gaggi, an offense that might result in the death penalty. Castellano, who was Gaggi's close buddy, took Epolito's side in the conflict and granted Gaggi carte blanche to act whenever he saw fit. On October 1, 1979, he and Demio killed the two men by shooting them while riding in Epolito Jr.'s automobile on their way to the Gemini Lounge. A witness driving by just when the rounds were fired inside the parked car was able to inform a nearby police officer, who then went on to arrest Gaggi following a gunfight between them, which left Gaggi with a gunshot wound in his neck. Gaji was charged with murder and the attempted murder of a police officer. However, due to jury tampering, he was only convicted of assault and given a sentence ranging from 5 to 15 years in federal prison. In March 1980, shortly after Gaji was sentenced to prison, Demio found and murdered the witness. In May of 1981, Henry Borelli and Frederick Denomi were apprehended for their participation in the operation. However, there was insufficient evidence to capture any other active players in the crew at the time. As a result, Borelli and Denomi were given the order to enter guilty pleas to the charges by Demio, who hoped that this would put an end to any future inquiries into his actions by the FBI or any other law enforcement authorities. The Day of His Death Patty Testa was one of Roy Demio's crew members, and on January 10, 1983, Roy Demio went to his residence for a secret meeting. It is not entirely clear what transpired, but around 10 days later, he was discovered hidden in the trunk of a car that had been left abandoned. There has been much conjecture over the identity of the person who pulled the trigger, with many believing that it was either Nino Gaggi, Patty Testa, Anthony Senta, or Joseph Testa. There were also rumors that Richard Kuklinski was the one who murdered Demio. However, law enforcement officials never brought any charges against him in connection with the murder. However, according to the biography of Anthony Casso written by Philip Carlo, Gaggi was not there at the time of the shooting, and Demio was sitting down and preparing to take a cup of coffee when the other three assailants began shooting at him. Although Paul Castellano was finally indicted for the murder of Roy Demio, the charges against him were dropped in December 1985. However, the remaining critical members of the Demio gang have all been charged with crimes 
and sentenced to life in prison. Demio undoubtedly spent a violent life and created fear in the hearts of mafias. He was a mobster, leaving a legacy of cruel killings behind him. So who was the actual killer of Demio? Do let us know in the comments below. If you're visiting the channel for the first time, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.